Greetings. I see folks coming on the line. Hello. Excellent. Good fun. Um, Liz will be a moment or so, so I will hold for Liz to come on in and kick us off. Mark, Mr. Peak, that, that bookshelf is looking a little bare. You, you might, I, I've got something for you. We could. Uh... <laughs> Thanks. That best read you'll ever, you'll ever make. Yeah, I'm still getting moved in here. Hey, Lee, how are you? Hey, Mark. Hello. Hey, Michael. Mark, your uh, bookcase is empty, man. <laughs> I'm noticing a theme here. <laughs> I'm going to put up a uh, backdrop. You're going to make him turn off his camera. Fine. Try, the, try that background option on Zoom. I hear it works really well. There you go. I like that. <laughs> Where'd he go? <laughs> That's a shot out my window. Oh, nice. You either get a glamour shot or you get uh, an empty bookcase. Uh, don't make us choose. Exactly. <laughs> I thought videos are all the rage now, like with Fire or Super Mario or what have you. Hi. Hello. We are uh, giving Mark trouble about his empty bookcase. Um, it, it seems to be the traditional thing this morning. And it's recorded. It is. <laughs> Just quickly running through to see all the folks that we've got on the line here. Quite a few. So Liz, whenever you are ready to be able to kick us off. All right, let's do it. Good. Just checking out on music myself. All yep, right. So, we're good. Yeah. All the normal intro slides welcome everyone you all made it hooray uh and i'm sure amy you're keeping track of who's yep on the line mostly today we will be talking to the sigs so uh without further ado who do we have from sig app delivery as i see he will mute ah, give him a second to unmute Hey, hello. Hello. I'm already up at the beginning. So yes, <laughs> we've moved things around. I, 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 I made things difficult uh, for everybody. <laughs> so I thought I'm actually on time, and now I'm actually late. Okay, that, that's great. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk a bit about uh, app delivery here. Just very briefly, we got the review request for um, Artifact Hub. For Sandbox, uh, we discussed it with uh, Matt uh, already that what we want to have also presentation and also want to have an engagement obviously with the other projects um, that should integrate their content in there and we will have something hopefully in the next couple of uh, weeks there and also learn a bit more about especially Artifact Hub roadmap and who's going to contribute also from the CNCF members because right now it's a pure third party development. And so for all of the other projects in here that are kind of related like Falco and, and OPA uh, would also be good for you to provide your feedback on, on Artifact Hub and how you want to, uh, to work with it. The hardware graduation one, this is just ongoing. It has been, most of the hardware work has been done. We have uh, answered most of the questions. This is just with us right now to just provide a final read through of this, but we're not expecting any bigger veto from, from the app delivery side on, on the harbor here. On the air-gapped uh, working group, so for those who are not 
I don't know what we have been doing. So we have split up the work in the, into individual working groups that came out um, of this and have people driving it. The first one was the air gapped working group. So this is everything Kubernetes obviously running in restricted environments. Here there is the first work really on best practices for installations on air gapped in the wild, what is already available and developing best practices on top of it. Right now, again, focus is on Kubernetes per se. We all understand that we eventually have to look into applications, but there's not a lot of value of installing an application in the Kubernetes environment if you can't install um, the actual cluster. So that's the work that's going on there. The second one is the operator uh, working group that focuses on operator related topics. The first one will finish, will be finishing the definition of operators. So right now we do have a definition, but the definition is very high level, like it's a CRD and the controller. Uh, we want to get more specific there. We also want to take best practices that are available around um, operators from, from various sources and, and people have written about uh, these best practices and start working on this. Interestingly about this uh, working group, if you look at the charter document on the number of interested parties, that's really interesting to look at. That's the first working group that has more than one page of interested parties in this working group across organizations. So just more like the first page is just on um, people who are interested. So there's massive interest in that operator related work um, across a wide variety of organizations from tool and software providers all the way to, to end users. Um, they will have their first actual meeting after the getting started meeting next week, if I'm not mistaken, I think next week. Uh, results are not yet there to present, but expect something in the next uh, months or so, especially um, you have already something on like the air gap installs in the world, which is linked here. And that's it pretty much from SIGAP delivery. Um, except one more related thing is that the Helm graduation public comment period is open until the end of today. Um, so please comment on the mailing list. There have not been any comments at all. So I can't believe no one has anything to say about Helm graduation. So um, please do comment. And you, sir, have jumped the gun. You have another item about that at the very end of the meeting. So you get to say it twice. <laughs> all right, anything else for app delivery? Uh, no, I think, unless there are questions, obviously. All right. There are no questions, obviously, so that's... Yeah, thank you. Uh, next up, contributor strategy. I'm not sure if there... Oh, Josh might be here. Yeah, I'm definitely here. Just want to double check that Paris isn't here. I am not <clears> seeing her in this and also not seeing people in the okay. meeting. So. Okay. Yes, um, well, we are in the process of getting the SIG in order. Um, the, um, uh, we've linked some issues there. Um, <coughs> um, we're getting the SIG organized so that we can actually do work and setting up the repo and that sort of thing. Um, however, since we started this with a couple of projects in mind, um, we're going to be launching a couple of those this week. Um, uh, Paris is going to be starting um, uh, work on forming the maintainers circle, um, which is um, uh, the idea of a, a peer help uh, organization for uh, the maintainers across CNCF projects. Um, and I'm going to be launching the governance working group um, because that's how I got involved in this in the first place um, uh, in terms of providing guidance on, on governance. Um, if any of those things interest people on this call, listening to this call, um, our next meeting is this Thursday. Um, so I, if you can go ahead and join, we have lots of things to do. Um, and unfortunately, um, I don't, I'm not sure what's up <coughs> with the AMA. Um, that was I'm not here. one of my things. I'm so. late. Oh, ah, you want to talk uh, about the AMA? 
Hey. Um, so AMA, we're going to do this uh, we, since we meet bi-weekly. Uh, one meeting every month is going to be dedicated to contributor uh, maintainer AMA, meaning any maintainer can come and ask us any contributor strategy kind of question. Think uh, not like low level uh, contributor office hours, but high level contributor office hours. Like, hey, I have this, ma you know, this major issue or, hey, you know, how do I get 10,000 10,000 more reviewers. Hey, I want to know too. But anyway, um, that kind of stuff. So we're going to do a uh, send the word, sp uh, spread the word, send out here to the TOC list and also do some kind of meta introductions about ourselves uh, so that we can get more people interested. And I think the best thing for everybody to help us with on the phone is just to spread the word. Uh, once we get some of this introductory information out there about us, like a meta blog post and uh, more information to mailing lists, including other maintainer mailing lists, um, that's, I think, the best thing is just uh, information discoverability about us and spreading that around and letting people know that we're almost open for business. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of the other issues that are set right now are uh, issues about us and how we set up. Um, so, you know, once those floodgates open, uh, we want to make sure that everything looks good and, um, you know, and people have like the right communication inputs and outputs and things like that. So that's what the, that's the AMA. That's really cool. Are the GB, are, is Michelle and Matt on the line, by the way? They are. Yeah. Michelle and Matt, can y'all join us at 10 a.m. PT on Thursday for just the first half hour? I know y'all are super busy, or even 15 minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I yes, I should be able to be there. Sweet. Yeah, I know. And I know, Matt, you've got, a, you've got networking. So if y'all can come for the first half, that would be awesome. Um, we want to ask you a ton of questions and see where we can collaborate and not only collaborate, but enhance kind of what y'all do for the GB and what this crew can help you with from a contributor standpoint. That's awesome. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. That's it for us, I think, unless, it, unless Jared's on the line. Josh, did you have anything else? Great, okay, wonderful progress. Who's our next? SIG Network. SIG Network, a short update today. Um, two topics, uh, both projects proposed for adoption. One is Chaos Mesh, proposed for Sandbox. The majority of the project contributors and maintainers are physically based in China, and so while we typically hold the SIG network, we typically hold a SIG network meeting at an hour that is, uh, I wouldn't wish upon anyone um, in their time zone. So we're looking at moving that to an, either an earlier meeting um, at 8 a.m. Pacific or potentially a later one. Uh, I think the later one would actually work better for most time zones. Uh, the problem is that some of us have conflicts on that, that day. So. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably send out a, a quick uh, survey on the mailing list to confirm that next meeting time, but want to make sure that we're accommodating to the Chaos Mesh uh, project team. Um, they've been in queue for a little while to present their project. Uh, second project that has been um, proposed for <clears throat> adoption at an incubation level is Contour. Uh, Contour is under active um, diligence uh, at the moment. Um, Ken Owens and Matt Klein are both uh, are both going through that diligence right now uh, and confirming um, positively confirming adopters of the project. Um, so just just got message from both um, Ken and Matt where um, th th there's kind of all positive traction um, thus far on the, the diligence, um, and so. Uh, so yeah, so good, good report progress there. Um, I think that that's it for the the SIG. Good thing. 
Great, thank you, Lee. Uh, any questions on that? All right, let's go to SIG runtime. Hey, everyone. Um, yes, SIG runtime. Uh, so we have some project updates. Um, virtual kubelet uh, presented to the SIG about four weeks ago. Uh, they're looking at uh, going for incubation. Uh, so they wanted to know what it would take to get there. So they presented and the SIG runtime team provided feedback and and basically they, they're going to add more documentation as far as the, you know, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, uh, in terms of the API. So for those of you not familiar with the virtual kubelet, it's a library that uh, simulates what the kubelet does. <clears throat> so uh, the documentation requested is, uh, you know, how that compares uh, to what API the kubelet supports. So once they have that, they've already started a document. And once they have that ready, they'll come back to the SIG and, and you know, we'll provide more feedback and decide what the next steps are, whether to start due diligence or uh, uh, continue with more iterations. So uh, Harbor is applying for graduation and we're still waiting on some of the six to do their review. So um, SIG uh, Storage already completed their review, but we're waiting for SIG um, uh, app delivery to review their the Helm charts and we're also waiting for uh, SIG Security to complete their security assessment. And then we'll consolidate those uh, reviews and uh, send out, uh, we have a public document uh, we'll provide to the TOC for recommendation, uh, whether to graduate or not. Then there's a couple of projects in the pipeline. Uh, Quay, uh, it's applying for incubation, is a very similar project to Harbor. Uh, it's a container repository, so I expect, uh, their team to present in SIG runtime in the next couple of meetings or, or in the next meeting. And then another one is Metal Cube. Uh, they're applying for Sandbox. That's uh, bare metal provisioning of nodes or Kubernetes nodes or bare metal machines. Uh, uh, so I expect them to present, I think, in the next meeting. So uh, the other item is uh, Quinton and I met uh, to talk about the roadmap for the SIG. And so we're looking at several things. Uh, so those include uh, health checks of the projects, uh, you know, container ID, build packs. I think Kubernetes is pretty good right now, but uh, there's some other projects that, you know, uh, they uh, wanna, might, might wanna check on, on their health. Uh, so we also want to identify some existing gaps on, on these projects, so some technologies that are not currently in the ecosystem that maybe you want to talk to some uh, projects that may want to join the CNCF. Uh, we want to continue educating users and community about these existing projects, uh, what they can do. So end users are important. So, I mean, Kubernetes is uh, very popular and a lot of people know about, uh, about the project, but some of the other projects are not as popular. So then we may want to provide more education on, on some of those other projects. And we want to continue performing due diligence on uh, projects, whether they're applying for incubation or graduation. Uh, we want to define some interactions with uh, some of the other CNCF6 and other uh, community groups uh, um, what would it take? Uh, what would those interactions uh, look like? There's some roles that we still need to identify. So as far as tech leads, so we want more participation. Uh, and also we're looking for scribes for, for our meetings. So this roadmap is open for comments. Uh, so anyone uh, will be able to make any comments. So the idea is to leave it open for about uh, two weeks. And from there, we'll decide, uh, you know, what, what we'll be the priority of what, some of these items what we'll, we'll take on. So another item is that um, uh, related to the roadmap is that we reached out to several communities to participate. So um, some of those are uh, the Kubernetes SIG node, uh, we have Kata containers, uh, Gvisor, the WebAssembly community, and the Firecracker communities. So we want to get some participation from them. 
um, to to get more uh, uh, you know people interested in the in the SIG. We're looking for another TOC liaison. Uh, we already have Brendan Burns uh, as a liaison, uh, but uh, uh, the, the reason we have two liaisons is for backup purposes in, in case one of the liaisons is not available and the other one can fulfill uh, that duty. Uh, so there are some people interested in the TOC, but that hasn't been finalized and we expect that to happen pretty soon. And then uh, at, at our last meeting, we had a presentation from Kata Containers. So uh, it was a very informative presentation. And you know, this is some of the things that we want, we'd like to do going forward to have some of these communities come in and present about their technologies. And yeah, and that's it for the updates for SIG Runtime. Any questions? Hey Ricardo, uh, this is Alina. Um, I just I just wanted to say that uh, I would like to be the TOC liaison for C Grand Time, or. Awesome, yeah. If there's a list that you're considering currently, just know that I'm up for it. Okay, great, great. So, yeah, um, I don't know what the process is to officially become a TOC liaison. I guess uh, maybe Liz can uh, start that process or. Yeah, I, I don't, it's a good question. I don't think we have a documented process for how that happens other than members of the TOC volunteering or being um, volunteering. <laughs> submit a pull request? Yeah, and I, I was, I've actually just raised an issue because our current documentation of SIG liaisons is out of date. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we should, yeah. But unless anyone else on the TOC goes, no, I want to do it, I think Elena would be marvelous. Fantastic. Oh, we can catch up oh, offline too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Was there any other questions or are we? Let's assume we can go on to SIG security. Hello. Hey. So uh, before we get into the uh, meat of uh, updates, relatively brief, I uh, just wanted to share with folks that. Uh, um, both of my co-chairs have been uh, impacted by uh, COVID-19, uh, not directly. Uh, Sarah's been uh, self-quarantining in Boston, uh, so both are stuck, uh, not at home. Uh, Sarah's in Boston uh, and JJ's in uh, India uh, and stuck there. Um, so uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting one. Um, so our um, you know, one of our, our main areas of focus and sort of the stability in uh, um, in that is uh, the Harper graduation due diligence, uh, anchoring uh, the work around uh, you know what SIG security is providing uh, diligence in our security assessment process. Uh, it's our most mature uh, and process and um, link here to. Um, the overall assessment. We've um, formed the team. Uh, Andres Vega is going to be uh, taking point in uh, the security review and uh, we have a, an illustrious team of reviewers and an observer uh, who is uh, um, participating and uh, will be um, working through that over the, the next few weeks. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that timeline is a little bit slower, um, given every, everyone dealing with the pandemic, um, but we're able to move forward and don't see any, um, any blockers to us being able to complete our due diligence for Harper's graduation. So. Um, I think one other thing I was hoping that we can get onto your radar is the um, dragonfly, uh, which I think could, uh, this is actually based on some, some comments from Justin, I think it, it could usefully use some um, uh, advice from the SIG security. Yeah, I think it would be valuable for dragonfly to get an assessment. Great. Well, uh, let's get them PR'd into the repo and 
uh, will kick off the process. Great. There's also there, there's also a couple of projects uh, that were discussed last week. Uh, I think there's also waiting for uh, Six Security Keycloak and TIKV. So Keycloak, I know, is uh, teed up for May. Um, TIKV, I'm not, uh, you know, let's make sure we get a, a PR into the, the Six Security repo because it's not on my radar. Yeah, TIKV, I think, primarily falls under SIG storage. Um, so we'll be certainly looking oh, okay. into it in the next few days. But but there are aspects that are, you know, security related, as, as with almost all projects, I think. I think this is a probably a, a syndrome we're going to come across where every project needs security re review pretty much. So I guess we should figure out how, how SIG security is going to kind of deal with that. Uh, and not, Great. You know. Well, we're ramping up. Uh, you know, each each process uh, we go through, we uh, expand the team, and uh, we've we've seen uh, increased commitment to uh, our reviewers. Um, so we're building momentum to be able to sustain that, and uh, I'm really happy with the the maturity and and us sort of you know going back to the security assessment as that being. Uh, core wheelhouse is is you know sort of emphasizing um, that uh, that muscle. Plug that muscle. All right, I just found the uh, Dragonfly PR and uh, uninactivated it. If that's a verb. <laughs> All right, great. great. Is there any other questions for SIG Security? All right, SIG Storage then. All right, so uh, last week's meeting was canceled. Uh, we didn't have, um, we had wanted uh, Travega to present, but they moved it out a couple weeks, so it's queued up for tomorrow. So if anyone's interested in hearing about that project, please join us. Um, and our backlog is all caught up. I did have a last minute addition to the slide that didn't get put in. Uh, for Rook graduation, the project has updated to the current template as requested by the TOC. That was just posted about. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me? I got disconnected. You're back. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> so anyways, Rook, uh, we've already suggested for graduation that they've updated to the proper template. So that should be ready to roll. That's all we have. OK. Any questions? Oh. What is going on? What was that? <laughs> I got booted. Yeah, I think Zoom is just booting people. Oh, out. I thought it was my network. I got dropped and then came back in again. Oh, it was Zoom, was it? Okay. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I assumed it was my network too. When you have seven people on the same hub at home, it's. Nope, we are seeing lots there. of people getting kicked off, but there are slides. We will we will follow up with slides <laughs> as needed. Zoom, Zoom, right, Zoom this is increased more or less. from 20 million to 200 million in the last few weeks. So yeah. one might understand if they have some scaling issues. Does anybody know if they're running on Kubernetes? That's what I want to know. I wanted to know that too. Uh, funny. <laughs> we should ask. Whatever they the last time I asked built it on it, successful. <laughs> Right. Sig availability, <laughs> first official. Could you reload, uh, reload the slides, please? Uh, Matt and me have been busy in the background. That's going to be challenging. Work with what you got here. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. But, oh, you can, you can reset. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that's the old vote. So, hi, everybody. Uh, if I guess I will just talk to what the other slide says then. Uh, so we passed the TOC vote. Uh, the SIG exists. 
Um, we have a new liaison, uh, Brendan Burns. Uh, thank you to him. Um, we have uh, two chairs uh, uh, to start off with, and we're working on uh, finalizing the third. Uh, we've got a proposal for our, uh, our first tech lead, and we've merged the charter. Uh, and let me hand it off to Richie uh, to talk through the rest. Yes, so um, the next steps, as you uh, know, you can't see them anymore. Um, so anyway, I'll just talk for you. The next step, oh, thank you, Liz. The next steps, um, we will expand uh, the content, which we currently have. Content or comments are, are appreciated. We will work through all our issues and such. Um, we need to select and vote the tech lead. There is one open question on where that actually happens. Uh, is it the talk list or is it the uh, is it the sick list? We just don't know. We just want to, we need to know so we can start that process. Um, we are yet to set up recurring meeting times, but now that we, we actually have the SIG, that's uh, one of the next things we are going to do. Um, and as a general FYI, Cortex was the only thing within CNCF space which did submit the yearly update. So it makes sense that that would be the first thing we would be looking at uh, as a group and with the tech lead. That's more or less it. So again, we have this one open question and if anyone else have any questions, now's the time. So is the question being able to schedule your meeting times or how to be able to get a uh, tech lead up? Uh, tech lead. Uh, we'll do the meeting times ourselves. Um, okay. How do we do the tech lead uh, selection properly? Like we write the docs and everything, but where should we have that vote? My we... recollection, I, this it is documented because I recall going through this with some other SIGs. My recollection is that, uh, yeah, the the SIG chairs nominate and uh, the, oh, no, no, no. The TOC has to vote for the uh, chairs the and the TOC plus the chairs vote for the uh, tech leads. Yeah, correct. We it's wanted to confirm if it was on the ability mailing list or on the TOC mailing list. Exactly. Yeah, that's Liz, correct. Liz, is that process documented anywhere? Yes, it, I'm, is, I'm, it, so, it is definitely documented and don't take my word 100% for it, but it definitely is. Uh, yes, the, the, the process is documented and we are following the process. The only question which is not uh, coming or not answered in the docs and in the processes, where does the actual vote happen? Should it happen on the TOC mailing list or should it happen on the SIG working uh, on the SIG mailing list? That's the only thing which, which is open. Everything else is answered and documented. Oh, okay. I would say TOC mailing list because not all TOC members will be on all the SIG mailing lists. Okay. Okay. Oh, I just realized we actually have the old version of the, ah, oh, yeah, sorry for the confusion. Uh, that was supposed to be changed that question, that open question. Yeah, sorry, I see where the confusion is coming from. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that on the DOC list. Understood, thanks. I'll, I'll also briefly mention that we have a number of other uh, folks that are uh, interested uh, in various capacities of tech lead and uh, contributing to the SIG. So um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have an update uh, next time around and uh, on the list. Yeah, regarding which mailing list, I would just suggest just distributing it on both. Uh, I'm sure there's interest from both parties. Uh, ultimately, only the TSC members and the chairs get to vote anyway, but the rest can observe. Sounds good. Okay. Hello. Hello. Six serverless. Yes, so hey, it's it's Doug and uh, Mark is on as well to cover for me where I get it wrong. Um, so those of you who may have been following uh, the six serverless discussions, we've been kind of dragging our feet a little, uh, mainly because we're, we weren't quite sure whether it was worthy of a separate SIG or we're going to try to merge it into SIG runtime or app delivery or one of the other ones. Um, and also, we didn't like the name serverless. We couldn't. We wanted a more abstract names, so we kind of were dragging our feet for a whole bunch of reasons. And 
and we finally decided, okay, we needed to kind of pull the trigger and actually do it because really there really wasn't a good home for things like the cloud event spec, the workflow spec, and the things that we're actually working on. And since everything needs a SIG, we said, okay, we'll just bite the bullet and do it. And so this, you can see the link to the PR in there. And we, we've put together PR with the draft charter in there. And what we decided to do was to have the serverless SIG focus more on technologies that more that are more focused on delivering a simplified user experience. So the way to look at this is you may have a, a platform like say Knative as an example, even though it's not in CNCF, um, something like Knative that's, that's trying to take an underlying technology like Kubernetes and simplify it for the end user so that they're trying to hide the technology that's used under the covers. So SIG serverless won't get into Kubernetes but it'll get into the technology that makes life easier for the developer. And that's probably the easiest way to, to think of it. And that, that easier user experience or developer experience isn't just for how you deploy your application. Maybe it's how you manage your application in terms of like workflow, how events maybe flow from, uh, from your, your various functions, right? Or maybe about how you connect up those applications to backend services, right? So it's not how that linking gets done through config maps and secrets, but rather how that gets exposed to the end user. That's where we think our sweet spot is, is more on sort of the developer experience side of things, okay? And you can sort of see some examples that are listed in there in terms of, you know, abstracting away the platform, orchestration workflow, interoperability is obviously a big one because we want people to be able to take their application and port them to one platform to another. Um, integrations of those workloads with backend services, stuff like that. And those sort of uh, examples hopefully at least cover what we're currently working on, things like cloud events and the new specifications for cloud events, as well as service workflow. Um, in terms of deliverables and action and stuff, it's kind of what we're already doing in the current working group, right? Um, keeping the landscape up to date, um, the white paper or new ones if we need it, promoting serverless where possible. So for example, our working group is very heavily involved in the development and the, um, the activities around the serverless practitioner summit at KubeCons, and obviously collaborate with the other SIGs and projects as we go forward. Um, as I kind of alluded to, we, we were struggling with where we fit relative to the other SIGs. And as I said, probably the best way to think of it is by example, right? Runtime will own Kubernetes, but serverless will talk about the workflow that leverages Kubernetes under the covers, where the hopefully the workflow is presenting it in a simplified user experience or developer experience way, right? So hopefully a workflow user won't know necessarily they're using Kubernetes under the covers. All they know and care about is how do I get my workflow to kick off and to run containers, but how those containers are actually managed on the covers is hidden from them is sort of the goal. And if we are actually approved as a SIG, then uh, the serverless working group will just sort of fade away and because we're sort of looking at this as a morphing of the working group into the SIG. So we're not looking at really a whole bunch of new and different activity at this point in time, um, just sort of continue what we're doing. Honestly though, I do kind of expect that the current working group might have to actually split its work into more of a uh, project type of meeting versus an administrative type of meeting. And that probably would happen once we get more projects brought under the umbrella of SIG serverless, uh, because we can't do everything in one hour meeting every week. Uh, so we may have to do a split at some point, but as of right now, uh, we, do, are, we are able to manage all four projects under one uh, weekly meeting. Um, and I think that's about it. Obviously we are looking for a SIG liaison if someone wants to volunteer to, <clears throat> to take on that role. But otherwise at the, at the very high level, this is more of a morphing of the current working group into a SIG more than anything else. And let me sort of pause there and see, Mark, did I miss anything? Or any no, questions? No, I think you, I think you covered everything and be good to get some feedback from uh, other people on this. Yeah. Any questions? Quentin has a, has a question on the, on the chat. I think a lot of people probably have the same thing in mind. App delivery like Helm, how does that kind of stuff uh, relate to serverless? Yeah, I, honestly, I suspect we're probably going to get this question a lot. And the best answer I could give is, when you look at a technology like Helm, it's still pretty much sent, um, focused on a user who understands Kubernetes, right? At least from my perspective. And so I would not actually expect Helm to be a serverless project because to be honest, it's a little too technical and geeky. It doesn't hide enough of the underlying technology. That's the kind of the way I look at it, but I think we're gonna have to look at each project on a case by case basis. And I know that's not the best answer, but that's the best I can come up with it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, SIG app delivery is not, not, not Helm. Uh, I think it goes yeah. a bit further. I can see the overlap here. 
And I think it might require a bit of a deeper discussion that the broader group maybe should have, like the SIG serverless uh, people together with the, the potential SIG serverless people uh, together with the app delivery people. I, I like the direction that you're going. I can see a split of responsibilities there as much as I can see as an overlap. So we look into the delivery part of it, but not necessarily how you define or glue together an application, which is not in our focus so much right now. We also see an overlap and there is work and work that has not been started, but should have been started maybe, is around the whole application definition work that we wanted to, to dive deeper into, which is projects like OEM and, and, and others, where we still don't have a good model of how we actually define an application. Maybe this is something that would also fall into this working group. But what I can offer is that we get the two working, the, the, the serverless working group and app delivery gets together and we figure out the way, or we figure out how closely related we are and uh, uh, whether we're closely related enough to kind of merge things or whether we keep, want to keep them separate or if there's a splitting point. That, that would be my proposal here. Okay. Yeah, I'll, <clears throat> I'll reach out to you offline. We'll see if we can set up a, a time to talk. Um, yeah, like I said, I think this is going to be a continuing discussion, whether we have the SIG or not. Um, and <laughs> to be honest, there was part of the time we were trying to figure out a good word to say, you know, other stuff, SIG other stuff kind of thing. Because <laughs> when you look at something like cloud events, it, there is no good home for it right now, right, in the, in the current SIGs. And so that, that's, that was why we kind of dragged our feet. We weren't quite sure what to do with these other things. So, but yeah, well, I'll reach out to you. We'll set up a call. Yeah, and maybe to Lisa's point, yeah, we, we don't want to become everything. So it's, I think the way we did it also for observability and other things is that we more or less the umbrella one and we don't, in the past we went a bit wider, but not really deep and we're ignoring some of those deep topics. Um, and this might be the same case here, like there's like one or two bits and pieces that we might want to address while the rest is over there. That's why I want to have this discussion and I think the next time we can provide a better update. But, but I agree, SIG app delivery shouldn't become everything simply because we want to have some work life balance at the end of the day. Yeah, so Michelle, your comment in the chat is interesting. Yeah. When you say this SIG pass, becomes yeah. SIG PaaS, do you, are you referring to SIG serverless or SIG uh, app yeah. delivery? When you, when you say SIG serverless is going to um, focus on uh, the developer experience and abstracting away, abstracting away this, these underlying components, mm -hmm. I mean, that is essentially a PaaS and, um, you know, we've, we've had long discussions around whether we want to uh, host past pro type projects um, in the in the CNCF. So if that's the direction, then we need to kind of come around and have another um, discussion about it. Michelle, what is the current position uh, regarding whether we want to host PaaS uh, software in the CNCF? Uh, I mean, superficially, it seems to me like it would be a good idea, but, but it, it sounds like there is a counter argument. Is that true? Yeah, there's a scope. The scope is quite large. Um, it's not its own vertical necessarily. I mean, you can make it one if you really scope it in in a particularly worded way. But um, it's going to use components from other SIGs like storage and observability. And so it's not its own independent vertical necessarily. It becomes this. Uh, horizontal layer that sits on top of all of the SIGs. Um, and we thought that initially when we were talking about SIG app delivery, you know, there was just so many other things um, that we wanted to, to get to, uh, foundational components and building blocks that we wanted to figure out the terminology for and, and you know, discuss and debate and figure out the landscape for that. I mean, that on its own is a, is a large scope. So um, I think we decided though PaaS kind of fits in under app delivery, that's not the direction that we'll go towards. And if that's something that people want to work on, we would form a working group first and just think PaaS is just a hairy beast. And I don't know that, um, that that's a place that we, as a community, want to focus on in the CNCF. So, so just for the record, if, if a PaaS project comes to the CNCF and says we would like to donate our project, is, is our answer right now, no, go and find another foundation? Or, or please speak to SIG app delivery or, or something else? 
I don't think that we've had a, a PADS project come in. So I don't think we've given a recommendation just yet. Uh, so I'd have to discuss, I think the TOC would have to have uh, a discussion around this. It, many of the TOC, the current TOC aren't the same as um, the ones previously. Uh, so there's no recommendation right now. Okay, I mean, it sort of seems inevitable that that will happen. So we should probably start that discussion and decide what, what our position on it is. Yeah, and we should discuss whether this foundation is the right foundation for that. Um, I, uh, maybe Cloud Foundry is a place that, uh, or a foundation we should talk to and figure out what our relationship is and um, see if they, uh, what they think about it. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys are following the chat, but it's uh, you, you can see the dilemma we had, right? <laughs> People keep asking about, well, does this go into serverless or does it go into PaaS? And there are things that just don't seem to fit in the existing things. And that's why we were struggling with the word serverless because we were, you know, it, it's, it's not quite accurate because it's almost like a, okay, this project doesn't go any place, like cloud events, doesn't fit in any existing SIG, but needs to go someplace. Mm -hmm. So SIG miscellaneous, right? I don't, I don't know what to call this thing. <laughs> Yeah, let's, um, uh, I think you pointed to a pull request, right? Uh, yeah. For yeah, so let's, uh, let's go back and, um, you know, kind of go through what we've proposed here. I think serverless is a really important topic, but I understand like the wording is a little complicated and we need to like think more about that um, and what the implications are and what our, our vision uh, is here and just kind of be on the same page on, on where the boundaries are, so. Um, I think, yeah, uh, let's, let's take that as an action item. Okay. Yeah, obviously, um, even after this phone call, lots of comments on the PR would be welcome because any help we can get to, to crisp up the definition you know, to reduce the confusion would be most appreciated. Definitely. I'm looking forward to this, by the way. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Sounds good. And I think it'd be great if, um, you know, app delivery and SIG serverless, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> can uh, can can figure out a boundary between between themselves. That would be that would be amazing. Yep, we will definitely try. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if, if any of the TOC members want to sort of put themselves forward as a liaison, it sounds like that is also uh, available right now. Yes, for the cheap low price of zero. <laughs> All right, and if nobody is rushing straight away, we can we can find a volunteer later. Always assuming that this kind of, you know, we find a good definition for it. Yep. All right, yep. thank you. Okay, is that all the six? That is Amazing. all of our six. Great. So, uh, oh, my mind's gone blank. Who's been uh, doing triage this? Week. Uh, we have passed off to Justin Cormack, Sheng um, uh, was helpful in last week. Uh, I put these two in here, and Justin, this is now your time to shine. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I mentioned before, Helm has another uh, as public comment period till the end of today. Please make any um, comments you like, and, um, ah, and um, Nat's I um I added this because there's been a lot of discussion on the mailing lists about this. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if this was a, a, a time to be able to put this directly in place. Yeah, the the issue about a SIG is I mean it's like things like cloud events. We don't have a SIG for everything. Um I also Nats is a bit of a special case because we have had some discussions about this last year where um uh the I I mean we didn't hold a vote so I can't say for sure but I would say that the sentiment was that it was um passing the criteria apart from uh, maintaining neutrality. I believe there have been some changes on that front. I haven't checked them out yet. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of comments on the issue and there's been an updated description and there's a long discussion with Matt. So I think it's, um, it's certainly changed since before. Um, so I think it, um, 
I think it probably makes sense to go for a vote. If um, I mean, I th you know, I think it's not. It's, it's. I think it's worth reading the discussion, but I think the discussion, like several, I think. Um, um, Guys, I guess I, I uh, have missed between all of the various things that all of us do. I think I, I missed the, the notion that uh, the Nats pull request was in need of a SIG being assigned. At, um, ooh, unless, unless there's a dissenting opinion, um, the, the a couple of the Nats contributors and maintainers that might even be on this call, but they've certainly been attending the SIG network um, uh, meetings since its inception. And I think it was generally understood that sort of SIG network was home base, so to speak, uh, for uh, traffic, traffic things, network things, which was inclusive. Uh, yeah, I mean, that totally makes sense to me. Same here, yeah. So the problem with Nats though, is that we are actually gonna have to figure out our overall position to the uh, maintainer status, right? And it's not clear to me that we've actually decided that. I, I have heard, I have not checked into this, but I did hear that there had been some changes to their maintainers. Oh, there have been. Okay. I, mean, I, I, I haven't confirmed that. Right, because either there would have to be changes to their maintainer status or we'd have to change our graduation criteria. Um, but it feels like we should circle back with the SIG either way. We probably actually, to be fair to Nats, we should look at the maintainer situation. Uh, that you know, if that is going to be a blocker, there is no point the SIG looking at it, and there's no point SIG spending the time on it or Nats getting you know led down a particular road. So let's um, TSC folks, let's all take a look at the maintainer situation there and see whether we think it's improved. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, there's been a fairly long email conversation as well, I think on the SIG mailing list. I, I was sort of part of putting some of those guidelines together in the beginning and also consulting with Nats on that. So uh, happy if you want to pull me into that discussion. Great, appreciate that, Quinton. That could be helpful. You have all the history. All right, so is that everything that is waiting for TSC input on all the That's projects I had for project boards. So moving on towards questions. Is anybody else aware of anything that we should Please. be looking at or not? Please, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be delighted to be told that I've missed something and there's something else out there. No? All right, other questions. Going once, going twice. All right. Stay safe, everyone. That's us done. Well, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.